Yes, thank you, Dr. Gans. Uh, when I put exactly the question that uh, you've touched on tonight, when I put that question to our central bank um, witnesses at an earlier hearing as to what might stand in the way of developing a stable coin uh, connected to the Canadian dollar, the answer was that uh, we have to wait till uh, the use of cash is less prevalent. And in fact, that they're monitoring the use of cash uh, and will not take that next step until they feel that cash is no longer as important in the economy. What, what do you say to that response? I, I say that my response is, why is cash still relevant? <laughs> uh, uh, the, that is, that is uh, telling me the uh, symptom of the disease, not the reason. Uh, I, I was actually, I was, I was going to have a little stunt where I showed you some cash and pointed out some stuff for, for one part of my talk, but I, I don't have any. I haven't seen cash in two years, but that's just me. But I think people do operate in cash. I, I know they operate in cash because I know uh, when people come around to uh, your door and, and ask for charities or donations, it's, it's very difficult to use anything other than cash for that purpose. Um, I think... I think the cash economy has been something that uh, uh, people have relied upon um, and uh, for, for good measure, uh, obviously, um, but I think less so. Again, this is something that I would target in terms of use cases. Um, I suspect, you know, of anything new like this, if you were to offer, again, a Canadian digital currency tomorrow, it would not be uh, people who are used to cash or taking up first. It would be other people. Uh, there's no doubt about that. People who use cash uh, no doubt have good reasons to do so. Um, but the goal is to gradually wean people off of it. Um, you know, credit card companies and banks have been trying to sell us on anything other than cash for a long period of time. And they've been pretty effective at it when you think about it. Uh, you know, cash is risky. Cash is also something that, that frankly, that we, you know, in terms of uh, operating a democratic fiscal system, uh, uh, cash by, it allows you to, um, it, it, it creates two things. One is it allows you to pool your uh, uh, transactions, income and otherwise, out from government observation. But at the same time, it creates, that's, that's, that's a pull away from, oh, that's a, that increases the uh, desire of governments to monitor what is going on with regard to digital cash. Um, and so you see this sort of counterbalancing of intrusion and exclusion going on. Uh, it seems to me, uh, I, so now I'm speaking with my entrepreneurial hat on, when you reduce friction, people come. It's amazing what friction can cause. If cash, cash is being used now, it is because we haven't got a, a alternative that involves less friction. But we know that technologically that ought to be the case. Um, it ought to be more secure. It ought to be uh, more able to give people information about how much they're spending and how they can manage their finances. Um, again, to reflect on the COVID era, we have seen massive asset price inflation because during the first year or so of COVID, people dramatically reduced some of their discretionary expenditure. I don't think we knew as economists how much of that there was. I don't think people knew how much of that there was. They could reduce discretionary expenditures and then all of a sudden find it desirable to and, and be able to afford a more expensive home. So I think this information is lacking and it's partly lacking because the basics, um, a lot of the basics are still going under a cash uh, economy, and it's just not giving people the information on their own budgets as a result of that, what they're spending. Thank you for that. Um, 